Welcome to Around the Campfire, music, stories, and songs. We are coming to you live from the sold-out Suncor Energy Center for the Performing Arts. Look at all these people. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're still social distancing. But that doesn't mean that you don't get to be a part of the show. If you want to interact, you want to ask our performers some questions, or you want to show some love, do so in the comments, and don't forget to share with your friends. In fact, while you're in the comments right now, I want you to push to your favorite emoji of what you're going to expect tonight. Maybe you're sitting there with a cold beer, and it's a beer emoji. Maybe it's just a simple thumbs up. Maybe it's a guitar. Maybe it's an accordion. I don't even know if there is an accordion emoji, but who knows? I'm Mike Jones. I'm going to be your host this evening, and I'd like to begin this evening by acknowledging that tonight's performance comes to us on Treaty 8 territory, the unceded lands of the Diné, Cree, and Métis people. We also want to thank our sponsors for making this night a success. Our partners, the Arts Council Wood Buffalo, Country 93.3, the Regional Municipality of Wood Buffalo, and the Friends of the Suncor Energy Center for the Performing Arts. And I want to give a huge shout out to our amazing technical crew, who we'll talk about a little bit later on. But right now, folks, are you ready to meet our musicians tonight? Let's say hi to them, shall we? We're going to start off with the master of the Stratocaster, Ava LaPrairie. The Sultan of the Scales, Max Noseworthy. The Guru of the Gibson, Michela. The Camp Counselor of Chord Progression, Dan Gilly. The mama of the Yamaha, Chantel Davidson. And the reverend of rhythm, the artist formerly known as Aaron DeLandes, Aaron Dean. Let's send it down to your co-host this night. This is Dan Gilly. Thank you for joining us on this Friday night, everyone. You look all so beautiful tonight, all of you. Thank you for coming out. I am honored to be here as part of this very first guitar pull, Songwriters Round, Fort McMurray. Thank you, Arts Council. Thank you, Suncor Center for the Performing Arts. I am on the stage with five of, I, I think, the best songwriters in Fort McMurray. Maybe, maybe, we'll see. I think so. I actually, uh, there's a couple of these ladies who are dear to my heart. Actually, all three of them are. I've gigged with all of them. Hello. I was going to do a Betty and a Veronica, but uh, <laughs> Ava, you're over there. I know. I'm so far away. It's so far away. <laughs> anyway, speaking of Ava, would you like to play us a song? I would love to. Let's hear it. All right. I'm going to start off with an original. This is called Ghost. I wrote this last summer. Um, the premise behind this song is post-breakup, where you feel like, after the relationship is over, you're being haunted by that person still, and you're still feeling their presence and not being in love with them per se, but the idea of them, their shadow self. So it's a bit of a psychological song, and it goes like this. Such beautiful scars in the back of my old sports car. Yeah, I remember it the most. But all I wanted was your goals. What do you want from me? What do you need from me? Is it something just beautiful or something terrible? Yeah. All I wanted was your ghost And all I needed was your ghost Ghost You were just standing there With all of your beautiful hair And all of your cigarette burns On the back of my neck it's a yearn, another part of me. I wish it couldn't be. I, I thought I needed you the most, but all I wanted was your goals. 
Oh, that was so good. Oh, I'm sweating. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my gosh. So, like, Ghost, can you tell us why you chose that? Like, that's the title, right? Yeah. That's kind of, it's like a haunting thing, you know, country music. Yeah. Tell me. It has a weird dichotomy with it because it's an upbeat sounding song and it has, like, catchy hooks, but it has a really kind of dark meaning behind it. Yeah. So, There's um, a duality there. there yes, yeah. exactly. There's that whole supernatural element with it of course and then um i think when i was in university we were reading a lot of books about the shadow self and about the unconscious and yeah. i was just i was just so into the idea of how even when we're past certain relationships there's always your mind always goes back to certain times and you remember good things but you don't want to you're like oh i don't want to remember this i'm moving on with my life mm -hmm. and the ghost aspect of it is how the idea of the relationship or the idea of how that person could have been with you still lingers on you like a shadow and you gotta shake it off. There's a lyric in there that's like, I gotta shake you off, get out of here you ghost, so yeah. It's cool because for me, I'm thinking of like, you know, you have a relationship maybe, you know, a, a romance that didn't end up being the romance that yeah, you had for the rest of your life. And even though there was good times and bad times, sometimes you, you romanticize it and it's like, oh, this is how I remember this person. And that's not actually how it was, man. Yeah. So there's a, there's a ghastly element yeah. to that. Uh, I wanted to ask you, so I've known you for a very long time. Uh, most of us, where we either know each other, we're getting to know each other. I remember a 16-year-old Ava La Prairie. Is this the camera? I remember a 16-year-old Ava La Prairie. And I don't know when you wrote your first song, because you were sitting on the piano writing songs, as probably Avril Lavigne songs or something. Yeah. But can you, can you tell me, <laughs> tell all of us a little bit about maybe your first song, or maybe just one of the first songs you wrote, and, and just kind of where your mind was. Were you writing about love, or were you always writing about these kinds of brilliant intellectual things? Oh, thank you for the compliment. That's very <laughs> sweet. Um, well, I'm from a really small town. Uh, this is kind of where my songwriting came into play. I'm from a town of a thousand people in BC called Tumbler Ridge. And when I moved here, it was kind of a big shock to me. And songwriting was such a great outlet for me. And um, I wrote my first song when I was about 12. And I remember it was about like running away, like trying to go back to BC. And it was on my dad's, he uh, made a cherry wood his cherry wood guitar he made himself and I was just always practicing it. My fingers were bleeding and I was so serious about my music. I'm like, I'm gonna do this. And I was always showing my songs to my family. So yeah, I think um, with my songwriting, it was more organic when I was younger. And now that I'm older, I try to make it more storytelling. Like as you hear in country songs, I used to before be really focused on the sound and write lyrics that made no sense. It just sounded good with the chord progression. <laughs> And now I try to just 
be more thoughtful when I'm writing songs. So, because some people really internalize lyrics, and then some people internalize sound. And I'm definitely a sound person. I'm definitely into tempo. Mm. So for me, a challenge at this age was being more conscious of my lyrics. That's that's brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> Good word choice. I'm just as like a partial English major, I'm like, oh, she's speaking I'm really so well. I'm so impressed right now. <laughs> I know, right? Just, like, taking I know notes. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I love it. Um, Max, yes. I'm gonna jump over to you. Do you have a song called Ghost? No, I do not. <laughs> do you have any relationships that were ghastly? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> quite a few actually. All of them. <laughs> no, no, no. My latest one is quite spectacular. Oh, there you go. Love it. Well, Max, can you uh, can you play a song for us? Yeah, this is a song I actually wrote about my current wife. She's beautiful. She's ama amazing. And your current she wife? Is. Oh yeah, she'll be the, for the rest of my life wife. I should say. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm not I'm not a, a word uh, a word sculptor like Ava over there. Oh my. More of a singer and a joke teller. Anyways, this is a song I wrote uh, after the fire. I went through some like pretty shitty times and kind of feel I had PST, PTSD or something like that, and I was became a different person and I was a bit of an asshole to my family and I don't know. I guess you go through these things but uh, I realized that maybe I couldn't live without my family, especially my beautiful wife. I wrote this song for her. It's funny, when I wrote this song I was sitting on top of a float cell in Syncrude 300 building and, and I wrote it with a welding rod on a piece of notebook paper. <laughs> Do. 
I don't think you're going to have to live without her love after that. Oh, my goodness. That was awesome. Did she cry when you played it for her? Yeah. Probably. Aww. That's pretty. Beautiful. Yeah. That's I, I, sorry, I have a question. So I want to know how your songwriting process is, because that was a really sweet song. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my songwriting process is when it pops into my head, I write it down. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I tried writing songs, man. I filled up a full songbook uh, when I when I was younger and when I first moved up here. I had a full songbook written and filled out, and I hated every single one of it with every inch of my body. <laughs> so uh, I wait till uh, when I hit some something hits in my head and it just keeps replaying over. I just I got to sit down and, and write it right at right off the bat. So I can't uh, I can't sit down and plan to write a song. It's got to hit me. All my great all my favorite songs that I wrote basically did it. that's how it happened. Yeah. Most of it funny the, the funny thing is most of the time it's when I'm working. So I'm like standing there and this thing starts hitting me in the head and I'm like, ooh, how can I build on this? And I start building on it and I'm like standing on a scaffold or out in a pit <laughs> doing something dirty like, and I'm thinking, oh my God, I gotta get to a piece of paper. So like with this one here, it, it wasn't a welding rod, it was actually a brazing rod and I had a piece of paper that I had gear road on. I flipped it over and I started writing it out and I was like, holy crap, this song is just writing itself. So for me, that's how it happens. Uh, I gotta wait for it to strike me. That's probably why I don't have like 50 songs. I only got like seven or eight that I really like that I wrote. Like, I do have 50 songs, but I don't like most of them. <laughs> <laughs> relatable. Yes. Very yeah, relatable. very relatable. So, so here, I just had a question here, because both, you know, Max and I, we're, we're um, not too old, but we're older in this generation. Me. We remember, you know, certain times. So, I mean, nowadays... I remember when I was young. Boy. When I was... Uh, is there a little bit of gray, you know? Yeah. Uh, but, but so I'm thinking, I'm thinking about you, and I'm thinking, okay, so if you get a melody in your head, right? Uh, give me the hook again in that... I don't want to live without your love. I don't want to live without your love. So, not only is that hook great, I don't want to live without your love, but it's how you're singing, right? Yeah. So for me and you, we'll just hit you know, our iPhone and just record it, right? And check it out later. But yeah. 20 years ago, we couldn't just record ourselves on a scaffold, right? 100%, yeah. So, like, we had, like, the tape players. How did you, did you have a pocket recorder 20 no, years ago? No, I, I, I bought one and I never used it. I bought one and I recorded a couple of things on it. And I was like, you know what? It's just, I got to use the sit down with my guitar and actually sometimes I, I don't even sit down with the guitar if I get the tune in my head like with this one I got the tune in my head and I kind of wrote this song I don't know if you noticed I wrote it kind of backwards so the chorus is first then the verse mm. right and that's not that's not e really a usual way to write a song but I thought it was pretty cool so I kind of did it that way so I repeat the chorus and then the verse comes after mm. so that's kind of a little bit little bit of an interesting thing I tried with this song and I thought it worked out pretty well so good. I want, I want to answer my question, though. So you're on a scaffold in 1995, and you got a cook in your head. You're like, hmm, that's a nice little ditty. How do you record that? How did you, did you just remember melodies? I remember melodies pretty well, yeah. So I almost wonder, let's go back to our psychologist, Ava, over here. Uh, right? <laughs> yeah. So, like, melodies can just stick, and you can, like, you get it in your head, and you came up with it, or maybe it came up with you, yeah. and it's, you're, it's, it's, you're hanging on to it. So for me, if I, if I start singing it in my head until I get sick of it, then I know I got a good song that I wrote. Yeah. That's what happens. I keep on singing, because I don't want to forget it. I'm like, crap, I can't forget it. Yeah. So I'll keep on singing it over and over in my head, the hook or the melody, or, and then I'll start building on it. And by the time the end of the work day is over, if I don't get a chance to write it down, I'm starting to get a little bit sick of it. Then I know it's a pretty good song, because yeah. it's catchy enough to stick in my head, uh, right? I think there's a line, play it till you hate it. Yeah. Mike Jones. <laughs> oh, yeah, what's up? We're just making some s'mores over here in the audience and reading all the comments. You guys are getting some great compliments over there. If you want to ask these guys a question, you can ask it in the comments. We got a question here uh, from the audience, and they wanted to know, what was the age that everybody here started playing? 11 for me. Um, I was singing since I was really young because I watched Disney movies, <laughs> but I learned <laughs> piano when I was about six or seven, and then I picked up the guitar when I was 12. I think I was about eight or nine when I started playing. I grew up in a musical family, so, you know, mama taught me the three chords and the truth, and there you have it. <laughs> and that's still all I know. <laughs> she knows four chords after last night, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was 12. I was 12 years old. My mom had an old uh, Ibanez, J Japan-made Ibanez, and she let me uh, play on that, so. I was six. I sang a Garth Brooks song at my parents' wedding. Oh, wow. That's cute. Beautiful. For me, uh, I can't say I was young at all. Uh, I, my dad used to play all the time on the couch and uh, old school country. like. And uh, I picked it up maybe when I was 20. I just grew up listening to him all the time. So that was 
pretty much my age. Right? So I find a common thread here. There's a bit of a family connection with most of us, right? Either our parents, maybe a mom or dad sang, maybe they played. There's, there's some kind of, you can draw a line back. Hey, would you agree with all of us? We can draw a line. Totally. Yeah. yeah. yeah I played numerous gigs with my dad. Yeah. That's yeah, enough. my whole family's you like the Partridge family in town. <laughs> yeah, brother, yes, you do have a very musical your family. Your brothers and you are amazing. <laughs> oh, so amazing. You yeah. and everyone as well. Uh, my dad plays the drums pretty hard. My mom plays the piano, sings. Oh, that's cool. Here's a funny story. For those of you that are guitar nerds, Dan, <laughs> Max, here, and all of you guys probably. I'm so when, when I started playing guitar, I started playing on a Hummingbird Gibson. Oh, okay. Oh. I didn't know what that meant, and I sold it for 200 bucks. Oh, no. Now I know what that means, and we're taught, like, oh, it's like, sweet. yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, uh, I know, I know. <laughs> if I could, if I had, was smart enough at the time and wrote the serial number down, I'd probably try and find it. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm looking for that guitar or any hummingbird. Gibson. That's unbelievable. I'm, I'm good. That actually made my heart kind of just I know. skip. A <laughs> Every time <laughs> I think about it, I'm like, what was I thinking? Why didn't my mother stop me? But I don't think she knew either. Oh. So for those that don't know, and I imagine a lot of uh, guitar nerds know, the Hummingbird, if you look at Eric Church or if you look at, gosh, you go all the way back to, you know, the Beatles and, uh, you know, some of these. And actually going back in the, the Nashville scene, especially country music, the Hummingbird and the, J the J45 are kind of the two... Uh, staple, you know, Gibson acoustics. And you know it's a hummingbird because if you look at it, there's a little bird mm -hmm. over here. Just also them big shoulders. Yeah, yeah big right. shoulders. Square shoulders. That makes me really sad. I know, me too. But, so speaking of, you know, I dropped the Beatles, but um, so Michelle, you've got a song, a brand new song that uh, gives me Stones vibes. Like well, Rolling that's Stones. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. that yeah. Yeah. I almost want you to start singing like Brown Sugar or something. Right? <laughs> Close, do but no, I Don't won't. Do I won't. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> and Michelle just showed me the song. We, we, we played it two nights ago, right? Yeah. For five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. I think I know it. I think I, I know not. it. I'm not sure either. <laughs> so what, like, can you tell me, like, give me a little bit about this. So, um... I've been doing music and, well, alive for quite some time. I won't tell you how many years, but it's been a while. I'm not a young one. Um, and so just You with, look great. Well, you thank you. Great. Thank you. <laughs> um, so just with life and the music industry and trying to break into that and, and just trying to be successful in anything that I do, um, and I'm sure most everybody that tries so hard feels the same way, um, you know, you get a lot of no's and you're not, you know, you don't have the right look or you're not the right age or you don't have the right degree or whatever situation you're in. So I just, um, I started writing this song and it's just kind of like, you know what, I'm just not going to stop. I'm just going to keep doing me and doing my thing. And at some point, somebody's going to know when they hear Michelle, they're going to know who it is. Or when they hear Ava, they're going to know who it is. So, yeah, girl. Here, um, here. I just wrote Woo. this song. It's called, I don't, even, I don't even know if I have a title for it yet. I think we called it Everybody's Going to Know My Name. I got Everybody Knows My Name. Everybody Knows my, There we go. But we'll God, call it that. Works. So this is going to be the first single um, off the record that I've been recording forever in a day. But this one's almost ready. Mike Jones, this one's almost ready. <laughs> Not long ago I was lost in time I'm tired of the pressure, tired of the grind People playing crazy games Now I'm leaving that behind mm, I'm gonna turn me a brand new page It isn't always true that wisdom comes with age I'm ready for a change Now it's time to change my mind I'm gonna dance barefoot in the rain Like nobody's watching me Let it pour down on me like sweet champagne I'll take a chance and roll the dice again Maybe I'll win the lottery It's not about the 
fortune, it's not about the pay. I'm not gonna stop till everybody knows my name. I used to try and please everyone. Now I'm only thinking about having fun. It's time to cut it loose and turn the whole thing inside out. I love the chorus. It's so cool. Oh, really man. Sorry. <laughs> Sweet champagne. Oh, love man. It. Bare so feet nice. champagne. I just want to. I love wanna, that, too. All of it. I want to hang out with you. <laughs> Three <laughs> syllables. Michelle. Yeah, that's right? yes. that's pretty sweet. It is. <laughs> Ava LaPrairie had a question. Yeah, I want to know who your musical influences are. Because I hear mm. country and I hear rock. And I hear, like, I love your strong vocals, so I'm very interested to know who inspires you or who you try to emulate and all that stuff. So I am, I love, like, I love old country, mm -hmm. um, and I love, like, the ladies of soul. Okay. Like, I'm an R&B girl to oh, the core. Really? Okay. Yeah, so, um, and of course, old country, most of, even new country, a lot of it is based on the 12-bar blues, so yeah. it kind of just segues into each other. So I think I, I draw a lot from that. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, the ladies of soul are amazing vocalists. So. Oh, yeah. And clearly, I am more a singer than I am a guitar player. <laughs> I almost forgot to play, even. But that's oh, you played? No, it was like, great. I, it was I, all amazing. I think I've played with Michelle for eight years, seven years. Almost seven eight, years. yeah. I don't think she's ever picked up a guitar. <laughs> now, when she songwrites, she picks up a guitar. And she sent me a track when she was. Uh, she wanted to do these tunes and she wanted me to play for her. And she sent me the tracks and one of them, I hear this piano playing. I'm like, are you playing piano? Do you know how to play piano? <laughs> so I think Michelle has got the right tools to write a song. A little bit of piano, a little bit of guitar, whole lot of vocal. Well, thanks. So good. Thanks. So, yeah, so fun. good. So uh, you mentioned the Ladies of Soul. Mm -hmm. um, chain, chain, chain. Yeah. You do that song, don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah you do. That's <laughs> you have mm. to. If you're gonna do soul, mm. yeah. Aretha Franklin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Aretha's a boss. Isn't she though? Oh, she's a total boss. Okay, I'm yeah. gonna talk. She's the original like diva. Yes, absolutely, Got yeah. without a doubt. I'm trying, I'm trying, but boy, that's some big shoes to fill that one. You're a diva. I, I am a diva. 
I am a bit of a diva. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Look at your mic stand. It's right? funny how it's so a positive and a negative connotation to right? that word. <laughs> it is, I always it? look at there it there as is, a yeah. positive. You can be a diva oh, yeah. in a good way and you can be a diva in a bad way. Right? But I think you're a diva in a good way. Well, right? thank you. Thank you. Me too. So <laughs> if you. I can talk up Michelle a little bit more before I play my song, um, she hits every note. It's kind of freaky. Like, she'll send me a track. She's like, I want to do this track. And she's got a band lined up. I'm like, hey, what key do you want to put it? She's like, well, the original key. I'm like, really? You don't want to move it down? <laughs> and then she'll do it. And then she'll hit it. I'm like, this is insane. Like, <laughs> it's amazing. And, and there, there's a couple tunes I'm, I'm thinking of. But um, you didn't mention, you mentioned that you grew up with the 12-bar with the blues and with soul and with country music. But you do a lot of 80s. I do. You do a lot of 80s. I do a lot of 80s. And you don't change the key. No. Like, lover boy and all. Yeah, yeah. anyway. They're so fun. Yeah, I love it. Cool. <laughs> and I love the ribbons. And the, and the uh, it's just, yeah. the scarf is so, so good. Thanks. It's got sparkles. I don't know if that shows through on the camera on live, but it's sparkly, everybody. It's beautiful. It's, it's part of the diva ness in me, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All the sparkles. I got, I got a little bit too. Just you a do. Bit. Just you a do. tiny bit. But you're rock and roll, right? It, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I do not have as strong a, as a voice as, uh, as Michelle. I was like, just turn my mic up because it's kind of like a John Mayer thing, and Michelle's like, woo! I'm like, oh man, I'm after her. Okay, that's okay. This is a lot of fun. So uh, I'm gonna play a song. Check one, two. We all write songs about love. We all write songs about love that went well and love that did not go well. Yeah. And this is a song about love that did not go well. <laughs> and there's a couple things I want to let you know about this song before I sing it. I was writing, it's got this like Irish. I don't want to say drinking, but like it's got this like you want to be in a pub singing the chorus with gang vocals. You guys know what gang vocals are, everyone's shouting it, right? It's kind of a raise your glass kind of a thing, but it's not a party song at all. It's a broken heart song. And uh, why we're raising our glass, why we're toasting is because it's kind of a eulogy. Can I get a little psychological, Ava? So what's going on is this. <laughs> This man just got dumped by this woman. I'm the man. And uh, this relationship needs to die. It feels like it's dead. And so I'm kind of giving a final farewell. And yet I'm biting my lip because I don't want it to be. And I'm going to try to, oh, but she's terrible for me. But I'm You're still trying. On. But it I'm hanging on. It's similar to my song. A it's kind of, yeah. I should call it Ghost. Can I, did you <laughs> oh, trademark? Sorry, it's trademark. What's That's it okay. actually called? Can I change, it's called Can I change round. all the words to you? <laughs> called Round With You. Your 
chances Great song, Dan. I love it. Ooh, nice. Thank you. All right, so now we got to ask you questions, Bob. Oh, okay. the oh, yeah. <laughs> Question time. <laughs> Max. So uh, you asked everybody else, what's your writing process? That seems like a great tune. I mean, I like the lyrics and the, the, the imagery and the words. What's going on there? Like, what do you use for what's your main oh, writing man. prose? Oh, man. You know, I... Uh, it's awesome. I so I'm definitely out of everyone here as much as I love country music and play country music and have played country music. I grew up in 90s alternative. That was my gig. Me so too. I had I had kind of, you know, I think of my favorite songwriters. I think of John Resnick from the Goo Goo Dolls. He used a lot of, you know, imagery. Uh, very, you know, I think you know every we all know Iris and those kind of tunes. 
Um, I think of Rain Maida from Our Lady Peace. I think of uh, that Eddie Vedder vibe. You know, there's, there's something about having lyrics that are uh, subtle, you know, like, like, like there, there, there's, a, there's an artistic vibe to it, right? Um, and so for me, I guess the, I'm, I'm dodging the question about how do I write? Um, I have a little bit of what you have, Max. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get a hook and then I'll just write a paragraph. Um, but, you know, for me, sometimes it's the melody that comes first. Like, I'll be playing chords and kind of hum a melody. Sometimes it's like, hey, I like that line, so I'll write that line down. But both times, I have to let a song marinate. Like, I, I've found that when I'm writing, um, I'll think I have a great chorus, and then, like, two days later, I'm like, this sucks. And then I'll keep, like, maybe <laughs> one line. And the melodies may be the same, but the line is different, you know? And so I find when I let a song marinate, uh, whether it's for a couple weeks or even a month or, or longer, I find I get the best results from that, that song. Um, yeah, it's, uh, and it's, it's, it's hard because as songwriters, sometimes you're, you're pressed. You have to write, you're sitting down to write. Mm -hmm. So you need to have some kind of product to write. But other I times, hate that part of writing. It's the worst part for yeah. me, having to sit down and write. It just, it, for me, it stifles my oh. creativity. You know, it's, I, it's, I just, yeah, I think for me, I, 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 I love to let songs marinate. I think that would be the answer. I have cool. a question, too. <laughs> oh, Ava. Sorry, I have to ask everyone a question. So, Dan, I know you from a while back. Yes, you do. And um, <laughs> you taught me a little bit of guitar back in the day. You're my guitar teacher. I was teacher. your guitar teacher. So... I always knew you and like I always associated you with my older brother because you guys are both like really good at electric guitar and pulling out these crazy riffs. And I want to know um, if songwriting was something that came to you earlier when you were younger or did it come to you after because I feel like you did instrumental first. I don't know. Just from your skills on guitar, I want to know about how you became into your songwriting oh, journey. Oh, thank you. That's Yeah. So I, like the rest of us, I did start writing uh, when I was 12, 13. I had a punk band that I fronted in high school. Ooh. And I <laughs> had a punk band that I fronted partially in college. And um, by punk, I mean a little bit, you know, alternative. Uh, into. You so had I, shorter hair. Uh, lots of earrings and uh, <laughs> all kinds of things. But so I was, I was writing well. It's like I probably wrote 50 songs in high school and then they were all terrible but you know broken heart and then and then in college they got a little better you know play for a friend's wedding hey write me a song that kind of thing and so what happened was when i went to music school by my last year i kind of stopped writing but it wasn't because i didn't love it or didn't have it it was just i wanted to buckle down and focus on technique and, and, and oh, okay playing. and i actually fell away from that side of things i think i was probably that's very interesting yeah I think it was 21, 22. I'm gonna bring Shan into this because it wasn't until I started playing with Shan nine years ago, right? Almost 10, nine years? Yeah. And where she's like, hey, can you back me up some harmony? I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I will. <laughs> it's like, and yet I had all this like in my background, but it was playing with Shan that brought me back into um, performing like this uh, nine years ago, so. Well, I'm glad I could bring out the beautiful harmonies that you have. Well, thank you. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's, so. it, it's super awesome to listen to something that you've written with lyrics, because I have your album, your yes. instrumental album, yeah. by the way, if you, ha if you don't have it, I'm sure he still has um, it's copies awesome. available yeah. that you can purchase and support the local amazing Dan Gillies. Um, so I have the instrumental album, and I've known you and been playing with you for eight years and had no idea that you actually wrote lyrics. So when we were gonna when we were doing this and we're doing original songs, I'm like, Dan, do you even have lyrics to go with the stuff you write? <laughs> like that's weird, because I'm not used to you yeah. ever singing. And he's like, Yeah. I kept it. It's awesome. I kept it hidden. I kept it underneath. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. That's great. Yeah. So Dan, I've got uh, another question for oh, you. Man, I definitely noticed the me. I definitely noticed the Goo Goo Dolls influence in your strumming there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I know it sounds like to me uh, you wrote that song on an acoustic, right? Oh yeah. Cuz me I find when I write a song on an electric, it's totally a different strumming style. Like you uh, yeah. very definitely have a very percussive strumming style on that song. Yeah. And yeah. for me, whenever I write something on acoustic, it kind of does the same thing. Do you find that like when you write something on electric, it's a lot more flowy and kind of... Oh, man. You, man, you're bringing up a really awesome topic that we could talk about for all the guitar players watching out there. But yeah, writing songs on electric and acoustic, like there, it's, it is a totally different thing. Um, you're, you're right. Um, you know, when you're writing on the acoustic, you tend... When you're strumming, you're drumming, right? So there's a very... 
there's a very percussive Jack Johnson kind of thing happening. And uh, I, not that you should write on the acoustic guitar, but maybe you should write on the acoustic guitar. <laughs> That's my, anyone out there, write on the acoustic guitar because uh, it just gives you everything. It gives you the harmony, the melody, it gives you the percussion. I find the songs are more dynamic, Max, when you write them on the acoustic. I agree. Um, but the electric's right when you're doing hooks and stuff and yeah. licks. Um, I was gonna say though, uh, and this is for any, um, oh gosh, uh, Zach Brown fans out there, I love writing on a classical. I don't know if anyone else likes that, the wider neck and the, the nylon strings. Love I love it. writing. I almost brought it. I haven't tried it. It's awesome. Yeah, and, and doesn't Willie Nelson, his trigger is a classical. The trigger is a, 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 a classical, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It, it's nylon string. Yeah, it's, um, it. it's, it's <laughs> and there's something dynamic about a nylon string, too. But I agree. I, I wrote a couple of songs on a nylon string. The only I've only I, like when I first moved up here, I didn't bring my guitar with me, so my buddy Juan lent me his uh, nylon string. Yeah. And I wrote two songs on it, and uh, they sounded like Bob Dylan does our album ish. Oh. It was so. I really I still love those two it's songs. Raw. Yeah, it's raw. Yeah. It's yeah. less percussive than a steel string because you got to be more gentle. But man, those two songs I wrote on that on that nylon string just I really love them. But you I'm not get, playing them tonight. By by no. the way, <laughs> you <laughs> no, get really some, experimental. On yeah, the classical, absolutely. Yeah. I feel like you can go do 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 and like fit a lot of um, lyrics in between when you're plucking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's an openness because of the nylon strings. You're getting more overtones and more harmonics. Yeah. And so you're just absolutely. getting a. It's lovely. I almost brought. I have this old a classical that it's not as cool as Trigger, Willie Nelson's. But but it like there is like you can see where a hole wants to start. So I almost brought it, but there's no pickup, so I didn't bring it. But it's like I like I was when I was prepping for this this show. That's what I was using was this nylon string. I feel like you need such a big hand to you play yeah. a classical. You need one. Max hand. Max, Max, <laughs> Max, show me your hand. Oh man, <laughs> show them your hand. Yeah, they're pretty big. I love it. I love it. Well, so I, I got a question for you. Sorry, the quiet guy on the panel here. Quiet guy. Um, so with the content of your song, yeah. right? When you play it now, do you still get any kind of emotional, you know? And that kind of goes for everybody on the panel so far. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you might flooding the smile because you're just in love, and you you might be relieved because it's gone, you know that kind of thing. Yeah. Like do you guys still have? That I always emotional get emotional when I sing my own songs. That one I was singing there, I almost kind of broke it, broke out a couple exactly. of times. Uh, I'm so a very emotional person, right? So for me, it's like, oof, a couple of, a couple of lyrics oh, I hit there. That's, that's my voice saying <laughs> and all of you. Oh, okay. yeah. I don't know that's, if I do. Uh, I think I approach it differently. I feel like when I first write it, it was like something kept inside, and then it's a big emotional release. Um, I don't know. It, it's kind of like with performing. I think everyone's different. Like, I feel like some people have this emotional outlet with it, and like with me, I feel like, okay, I think I'm more systematic in my brain where I'm like, okay, this probably got to be louder and then I got to be quieter here. Right. I don't know. I, that's how I am. I don't know how everyone else is, though. That, so I, I'm trying to think how to answer that. I think I have an answer. <laughs> so definitely get emotional when I sing, definitely. Um, I think that it's primarily the music that I'm being moved by as opposed to the lyrical content. I think that like it's those particular, you know, when I, um, you know, just playing a guitar hook and then singing a melody, yeah. you know, my my heart, my mind, my voice, my hands, everything's connected, and it's it's emotional to play. Um, which is advantageous for doing covers because sometimes you don't identify with the cover lyrics at all, but the music you identify with. Exactly. I'd say I, I connect more to the lyrics myself and it de definitely brings up some emotion, but I think it just changes every time you sing it because when you have a song that you really like or that's you know um, receptive, then you kind of just change it emotionally I that's, don't know I that's very true like so every performance <laughs> is different I well for me at least it's like you always have a different type of show different type of audience and as an artist you always have to learn to adjust yourself to the crowd or to the vibe of the room yeah when you say sing the same song over and over again you kind of have to recreate kind of that emotion yeah I agree with that yeah hmm. speaking of Chantel when you write songs yeah uh, and get emotional you have a song for us. So I do have play. a song. You have yeah. many songs. Let's play some tunes for the yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're no, all talk, talk, no action tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, gosh, Shan, I've learned a number of your songs. 
Um, and yes. so uh, I have to ask you, did you use the, the same strumming pattern? Like you? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, OK. When, when I first started playing with Chantel nine years ago, she would show me these very pretty songs with a very lovely voice. And, and she was out right out of LA, and she's this young Nashville, I'm going to be Taylor Swift. And then she'd play a song. True like, story. But you just did that strum pattern on that song and that song. Like I was like, I was. Yeah, and that goes back to I am not a guitar player. <laughs> I'm a singer and starting to become a songwriter. But so. in the last few years, you picked up your guitar playing a little more, I think. Yeah, I kind of, I yeah, I kind of dove into it and, and feel a little bit more artsy. <laughs> with my songwriting <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so I just, you know, like I throw in an A minor now when, you know. Ooh, I know that one too. Yeah, yeah. See, you know more than three. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and I've noticed. So I've expanded, Dan. Yeah, you have. At, at most gigs we do, you say to me, I need to play some songs on the guitar. What songs are, am I going to play on the guitar? I'm like, well, I'll just let me do it for you. You just sang, like, no, I need to play some songs on the <laughs> yeah. guitar. So I'm, I'm trying. Yeah, it's yeah. good. L looks great. I'm excited mm -hmm. to hear it, Shin. Thanks. Tell us about this song. So this song is really, really special to me. It uh, kind of like what Max was saying, it just kind of poured out of me and and I had to write it down. Um, so I just had my daughter and I was feeling, you know, all the feels when you become a new mom. And um, I just was thinking about my mom and how she raised me and I just you know, have this totally new perspective on her now that I'm a mother. And same with my grandmother, just it brought me back to her and her hands. And just, I had this image of hands and I'm like, oh, I need to write a song about this. And my gram's hands are, oh, they're so special. And poor, poor gram, she's suffering with arthritis right now. Um, but there's just something so strong about her hands. And um, I just kind of, I got that picture in my mind and, just thinking about my mom and just how she would rock me to sleep as I was sitting there rocking my daughter. And um, yeah, I came up with this song called Mama's Hands. Mm. She was standing kitchen sink there was no time to overthink the dishes piled high on the countertop the baby smiles she holds her hand no one needs to understand the feelings she stores deep inside her soul woman I've ever known like the waves in the ocean she rolled on even though times were trying she made a happy home mama's hands will never she'd say to the Lord up high from her bed. Now I know that God is love. She prayed for joy, peace in us, always putting us before herself.
her a child. She made a happy home. Mama's hands will never grow old. Mama's hands will never grow old. Nice. So beautiful. That was lovely. Thank you. I think Aww. I played a couple wrong chords, but hey. <laughs> Didn't even notice. Yeah. Oh, okay. Didn't even notice. I'm it was glad. awesome. <laughs> so pretty. Thank so, you. So pretty. Thanks. Um, mm, Shan, melody or lyrics first? So when you sat down, you were obviously mm -hmm. inspired to write about your, your grandmother, right? Yes. And so yeah. were you thinking about her and you started humming along, you know, a sweet melody to some chords? Or were you thinking, no, her hands won't grow? Like, were you thinking the lyrics first? Or were you thinking the melody first when you wrote Kind that? of both at the same time for this one, honestly. And it's like a different process for every song. So I was definitely kind of, like, I had that imagery. And then I picked up my guitar and just kind of, yeah, I kind of, like, had the melody. And I kind of, like, I was kind of just seeing the ocean and then, like, these images of my my grandma's hands and then my mom and and mm. it just kind of all kind of just flooded out so i love that scene the ocean mm -hmm. yeah so the then that line about like the waves in the ocean so yeah i just i really what's feel the whole line the waves in the ocean she rolled on oh i noticed yeah. a lot of physical imagery or of like photo photogenic in imagery in your lyrics i really could, i could almost see a picture when you were singing it it was really nice mm. yeah I'm like glad. very visual thank you i like that thanks yeah so i think i'm definitely yeah, lyrics usually first, but the guitar helps. <laughs> Man, that's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I had one more question for you, and I like I, I think I know the answer because I've been playing for you for for a while. But do you? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I was gonna say so. Like I know that you've been influenced by certain artists. I know you know whether it's the Taylor Swifts or the Avril Lavines and those kind of people. Love Avril. I know. Mm -hmm. um, but hey, so I like. Would be young, eh? I. <laughs> are, oh, you. You sorry. are. <laughs> hey, whoa, whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Come on, ladies. He's a skater boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a skater boy. We all had a crush on her. Okay, so. <laughs> Really? <laughs> no, that's in my Sorry. head. Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, Taylor she's, Swift. she's Guilty. a cutie. So definitely, good. definitely a Taylor Swift fan still. So, so that's my question, I guess, is like, mm -hmm. who do you look up to when you, like, you, you were obviously, um, you've been inspired by certain artists and their writing and, you know, how they write. Um, is it safe to say the Avril's and the Taylor's out there, or is there other artists that have influenced your writing? Miranda Lambert, 100%. Mm. She's so raw and real and just diverse. I think, um, yeah, she's definitely, when it comes to songwriting, that's for sure. Because mm. yeah. mm -hmm. I, I have a, a lot of different influences, like Shania and Dolly, but I definitely feel like Miranda, I admire her writing style so much. She's very raw, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and just she writes pretty songs, and then she writes like tough songs, and yeah. you know she's she's pretty diverse. She's a badass. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love her. <laughs> Who's this guy? Uh oh, <laughs> the strong silent man. The strong silent, right? <laughs> But he's probably the funniest one of all of us and the smartest one. Mm -hmm. And he's probably just watching us going, oh, this is kind of cool. You know? <laughs> just, just wait till they sing. <laughs> oh, man. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? I love it. You've got a Martin there. You're, you're the only one representing Martin here, right? Oh, is that yeah. right? Ava, you're, yeah. yeah. And the thing is, for those that are guitar fan, I mean, you don't even need to be a guitar fan, a country fan. Mm -hmm. Martin is kind of the, uh, you know, you could even argue as... Big as Gibson, if not bigger. I'd say sound-wise, Martin is ahead. Is ahead. Because yeah. when you think Gibson's Hank, style, but beautiful. Like Hank Williams. Play. Those guys Absolutely, Hank Williams, yeah. Willie Nelson. Yeah. It's all Martin. Yeah. Even so Dave Matthews plays mostly Martin. I mean, yeah. it, a lot of the most famous uh, acoustic oh. players are playing Martins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so it, it, it would actually be a, a bad thing if six songwriters, country songwriters, were on stage and there was not a Martin. It would be like <laughs> sacrilegious <laughs> because Hank Williams and all these. So, so thank you for repping a Martin. Right? Yeah, that's my. And it's nice and. Uh, I love this, hey? Yeah. That's just. I love yeah. the wear on it. Just rub it like. Every, it's like, good. That's it, man. Make that whole happen. What, what are you going to sing for us? Well, it's funny. It's, it's actually. This song is one of the first ones I wrote. There's no real structure to it, it's a story. 
And um, it's actually, if I get choked up a little bit, it's more about my dad, mm. right? So it's, uh, it's kind of growing up and um, it's called uh, Don't Rush. And it's like, you know, when you're young, you want to get up to driving and then you want to get up to, you know, whatever you want. But then as you get older, you're like, man, you know, I wish I was younger. I wish I had more time. And it's just about, um, you know, like a, a boy conversing with his uh, dad and, and a girl with his mom, uh, with her mom, and and them just telling him not to rush and, and just take it easy kind of thing. So that kind of thing. It's just kind of a life lesson kind of thing. Mm. I, I think those are my favorite songs, songs about life, songs about growing up and wishing you could go back and just yeah. the reflections songs. Yeah. Exciting. All right. So it's called Don't Rush. Here it is. Strong, independent, a 
Cold shivers, dude. Seriously. So good. I love the whistling. So fun. Okay, I think I someone should ask yeah. one question because uh -oh. we're getting close to time and then go through. Sorry? I, I hate to be that person, but. <laughs> you need to be that. I hate, I hate to, to be, be that, that person. I just want everyone to show their second song, so I think we yeah. should stick it to one question going sure. down. Sure. Sure. Well, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to give Aaron a little bit, little bit of love here just this yes. first time through. <laughs> yes. Um, I love the whistle, too. Gosh, whistles. Yeah. If you can do it, like. I cannot whistle. I mean, like, I don't people know. are like, you're a singer and you can't whistle? Or, can you? No. Well, I mean, I can, but not very good. <laughs> no. <laughs> Would not put it in a song. <laughs> no, it it honestly, so it adds so much, man. Like it just, you know, it just, it's another vocal styling. Mm -hmm. It's just so cool, and that the chord progression is lovely. There's the, it's funny because the chord progression gives off that uh, nostalgia vibe. Like mm -hmm. even if you were singing about a truck, that chord progression to me is like, oh, I'm remembering my truck. Like yeah. it just gives off that reflecting vibe. And, and that's why I was asking you earlier, but the emotional link is a lot of times when I sing this and I think about my dad, I just, I have to stop. Mm -hmm. you, know? you made me think about my dad too, to be honest, your lyrics are beautiful, man. I Aww. thought about my dad a lot in that song. Yeah, it was, I, I loved it. I was totally in the moment with you when you were singing it. It's such a good, like it's a, a life story song. Exactly. It's awesome. Is it recorded? No, no. This you is gotta a, get a This is one of those in the, in the books, yeah. But... <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll look at that. <laughs> yeah. cool. I and it, I was just going to say, it's really cool because as a songwriter, whether you see someone else perform your song or whether you're performing your song, um, you want that song to touch someone or a lot of people. You want that song to impact people, right? And maybe it's just a good song and it's beautiful. But for Max to say, I'm thinking about my dad because you wrote that song. Mm -hmm. I mean, like that's that's really the goal, right? Because you, you have, a, as a songwriter, you, you have to get this out, you get it out, and you hope that someone can receive that. And that's beautiful. Amazing job, dude. Yeah, man. Time. So, so good. So, we got a question from the audience, Mr. Mike. Oh, yes. Mike. Absolutely. Keep those questions coming in the comments, guys. We're seeing some great ones in there, so keep those coming for sure. And we're going to ask the artists uh, throughout the show here. So this one, we're going to ask. Uh, we're going to. I guess we'll start with. Uh, we'll start with Aaron on this one. Uh, if you could pick, if you. This is a question from Liana. If you were on a desert island and you could only bring one album with you, what would it be? I know for me, it would probably be The Wall. I'd have to bring The Wall because it's just a great like two. It's a double disc. It's, or it's nice Mike. and long. You know. Oh. That's a tough one. I. Uh, that's a tough one. Mm. I'll be honest. <laughs> um, just because of what I'm listening to right now, um, so it's in my head. Um, this last Luke Combs album, I know it's it's new so and it's good. Yeah, you know, it's it's a lot of upbeat stuff, a lot of uh, nice ballady kind of stuff, a lot of emotion, a lot of uh, yeah. And so I would say that. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ava La Prairie, you started the show. Do you have another song for us? I do. Um, the song is called Best of Me. Um, I'm not going to talk too much. I'll try not to talk too much. I was just uh, playing around with this chord progression in my living room, and my dad came out, and he was like, oh, that's cool. Let's jam this out. And we kind of wrote it together. And uh, this is just a redemption song. It's just uh, proving people wrong when you want to do something they say you can't, and it's about being a strong person. It goes like this. The 
you got the best of me Think that everybody knows your real hearts Watch out, I'm faster now And I'm stronger than I hear the words You love to watch me just fall apart Oh, so it was awesome. Your songs are so dynamic. They got so many little changes in them and stuff. I really like. Good oh, writing. thank awesome. you so much. Your voice is so cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, so, so just thinking of uh, best, best of me. Uh, I immediately it was funny. I thought best of you, Foo Fighters, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah. and it was kind of cool because like your voicings are similar to the voicings Dave Grohl uses in Best of You. So like I was like, oh, this song kind of fits in that whole ambiance. Like it was just a really yeah. Neat I've been thing. Thought, like, listening to a lot of Go Go's too. Like their first oh. album, I just like love the punk singing from Belinda Carlisle. I'm like, oh. Trying oh, to emulate such that an a bit. Singer. Yeah. I, I did have so for one question, I've got something I'd like to ask you, yes. Ava, if that's okay. Um, it's kind of along with Max. Um, you've had now two songs with very different vibes and different chord progressions. So what's your go-to chord progression? Mo most performers or songwriters, it's like G C D E minor, you know, one, four, five, three chords in the truth. But you're giving us like really eclectic stuff. So what's your go to progression? I love doing um, C minor sharp A E B and like putting a capo on it, maybe two capos up. Mm. I just I love it. I don't know. I write so many songs, especially on the piano with like electric piano with different um What's that when you could change the piano styles? Transposing? Or yes. Yeah, or, or yeah, yeah. Yeah, when you can make it like just electric piano, like. Oh, I see. Yeah, da, yeah. Da, da. I always go to those chords. And my brother always makes fun of me. He's like, you always do the same chords. But I love it. <laughs> I always do all the white keys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, it's very, it's very, very, uh, very. Uh, refreshing, you know, I'd like to go to an Ava show because I'm probably going to get like 30 different songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. very, I don't know what my style is. It's very different. I love she sings it. like, a sweet, like a sweet little bird. Mm -hmm. Like her <laughs> voice is just like... I oh, just, I love that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you do. You're just, yeah, beautiful. There's so much love right now. Right? I lo <laughs> Honestly, this is so fun. I wish we could do it's this funny for hours. Oh, sorry. Nope. It's funny because you do sing like a sweet little bird, but then in the in the in the chorus when you come in and say, 
goddamn yeah, yeah. special. It's like, yeah, you still get that power there too, right? What bird says that? Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's growing awesome. up, everyone's like, you're such a nice little girl, and I had all this angst. Yeah, it's and my voice you, is yeah, so high pitched, so I can right? just get it out in songs. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. awesome. It's beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Max. Yes. <laughs> I love your microphone. You win Thank for you. coolest microphone. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've had, had a couple of these actually. Uh, Play in Barris a lot, so drunk people seem to knock them over and beat them up a lot. And yeah. An expensive replacement. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to play for us? Uh, I got a song here I wrote. Uh, I was listening to a lot of Gary Clark Jr., and uh, I got a lot of buddies uh, that fly up here and work. I mean, probably not as much now because of the recession and everything, but uh, this is one I wrote especially for one of my, my good buddies. I mentioned him before. He lent me his guitar, but uh, it's called Fly and Fly Out Blues. This one uh, I wrote, wrote for my buddy Juan. And uh, you're going to get to see Dan play some cool lead on this. It's in uh, F sharp minor. Ooh, like All right, it. here we go. Suitcase in my hand, done another run of working, but the kids don't understand why I have to go away and work the hours I do. The other thing that kills me is the time away from you. Touch them Friday morning, and I get into my car. Not much longer now, babe, but the distance seems so far. Light comes on to tell me that I've got to stop the fuel. I don't want to waste a minute when I'm driving home to you. Because it's hard to be a working man when your work is far away in foreign lands. And it's hard to keep a family too when you're stuck here with the flying fly out blues. still at school a couple of hours of me and you acting up like fools when I'm in my camp room and the minutes pass like days I miss so much by being here it gets me in a haze cause it's hard to be a working man when your work is far away in foreign lands but then it's hard Keep a family too When you're stuck here with the fly and fly out blues Fly and fly out blues Man, it seems like they don't care Your family gets to wear And they get all your time when you get back to your room and drink, you always seem to think of leaving it behind, leaving it behind, leaving it behind, leaving it behind. Cause it's hard to be a family man when your work is far away in foreign lands. And it's hard to keep a family too when you're stuck here with the fly and fly out blues. Fly and fly out blues. Fly and fly out blues. Fly out blues. Fly and fly out blues. Fly and fly out blues. Woo! So cool. Oh, yeah. That was 
sick. Is it fly, fly or fly in blue? Fly in, fly out. That like is when you're working up in camp and you live back home in Newfoundland, you got to jump uh, on a plane. Oh, yeah. You be away from your family for two or three weeks. Such an awesome song. I love it because I heard, um, oh gosh, a lot of Gary Clark there, but I heard, um, oh, dun, 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 dun. Uh, bright lights, big city on my head. I heard that. Yeah, yeah. Which is, yeah. So cool. Yeah, that was uh, that's what hooked me on Gary Clark Jr. But yeah. guy's just so amazing. Yeah, no, that was that's awesome. See, and again, you know, uh, Max, with you, it's like, you know, you just gave us a, a, a sweet uh, tune to your wife, and then you gave us a blues tune. <laughs> so I want to go to a, a Maxwell show as well because you're going to give us 30 songs that are totally different. Yeah, if you seen my mixtapes growing up, you would have been like, what is wrong with that guy? <laughs> I had like go from Megadeth to Tool to Bob Seger in three songs. I just listen to everything. I love all music. So so eclectic. Um, so uh, I have a question for Max. Um, we're, we're still, I think we're okay. We're half an hour time, right? So we've got, you know, four As long as you keep the breaks in between people up to down around two or three minutes. Yeah. Um, so Max, you're a guitar player. Yes, I am. You're a pretty good. Player. You're a pretty good guitar player. Thank Max. you very much. I try. And uh, uh, you have a lot of guitars. I had a lot more before, but I lost a few of them. You still have a few, though. Hey? I still have quite a few. So yeah. I want you to tell us, in 30 seconds or less, about your first guitar. Give us a first guitar story. My first guitar. Well, my dad bought me a, or gave me a piece of crap acoustic when I was seven, thinking I was going to learn, and I didn't. So I don't consider that my first guitar. But he came home with a Series A Telecaster type guitar when I was 11 years old with an amp, and I plugged it in. <laughs> Man, I spent so much time with that thing. I used to get up an hour early in the morning so I could play guitar after eating breakfast, and <laughs> I'd come home from school. I used to live right by the school, so I'd run home and eat as fast as I could and run back into the bedroom and play that. Mom used to be like, man. And my older sister would be banging on the door, you're going to be deaf by the time you're 30. <laughs> Still he'll hear pretty well when I'm 40. Did you ever put <laughs> stickers on your Telecaster? Never. I've never put a sticker on a guitar, ever. Never will. You know I, like that, the, I like the more natural and kind of beat up from playing. Yeah, I'm going to break your heart here before Michelle sings. You know that uh, Japanese-made Ibanez that I started on? Yep. My mom let me put stickers all Ooh. over it. Acoustic That's your guitar. style. Hey, man, I don't crap on anybody oh, else's man. style. It's just my and style, I, right? Then I realized it was, uh, it was a pretty... Why on the guitar? Just put it on the case. <sighs> there you go. The case is the right place for stickers. You know, and I was thinking about Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day, but it was an acoustic guitar. Like, why put stickers all over an acoustic guitar? But I did. I covered it Stickers on an acoustic guitar. guitar. If it's a nice, solid wood top, it'll ruin the sound. You have changed, Dan. That's bad. <laughs> That's a wonderful first guitar story. Michela, so this is a song that Michela sent me that was on the piano, and I asked her, hey, who's playing piano? Well, I'm playing piano. I said, wow, you play piano. And I, I've been playing for eight years with you, and I did not know you played piano. I corded. Uh, it was I pretty, corded on piano. But it was really, like, it was, you know, it was good enough to do it in a ward show or something. Right? Oh, well, thank you. Right? Thank I thought you. it was pretty. Fancy that. All yeah, right. So um, this song, I want to yes. know a little bit about it as I pick the chord progression. All right, you that do okay? that. <laughs> so this is uh, a brand new song. Like, I wrote it a week or so ago. <laughs> um, and uh, it's, you know, we, we go through, it, it's a ballad. We go through life and uh, I don't know, I can't speak for anybody else on that's sitting up here, certainly can't speak for the men, but I'm sure that at some point or another, we all feel that we're just, we're so broken that we're ugly and the things that we've gone through and um, just what life throws at us just makes us just not love ourselves. And so um, I wanted to, and I, I was, that's where I was, and I, I wanted to write a song that made me feel better about myself, and hopefully it'll make somebody else feel better. So I wrote this song, and it's called Beautifully Broken.
Goodness, I'm like teary eyed over here. Wow, <laughs> the feels. Yeah, like love how you hold on to that email. Are we all crying? Can we admit that? that <laughs> yes. We're all crying? yes. Where's my sunglasses? Where's my sunglasses? Oh man, not showing you. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so close, so close. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really gorgeous song. Thank you. Yeah. I love how the, the whole E the minor there gorgeous. just a little oh, bit man. longer, and then you drop into the A, it just boom. <laughs> I love it. That's a great progression. Thanks. And I think like. Yeah. Any person can totally relate to it. Anyone who's been through a hard time, it just like, I think that's why music is so special because when there's no one to talk to and no one understands where you're feeling, there's always that one song that can just like get you through it. Yes, and that, that was what I'm hoping for with this song. Yeah, it yeah. totally resonated. Thank you. Yeah, beautiful. So, gosh, like, in your, maybe give you a 30 second question, in your eclectic um, taste in music that we all know that you have, um, 
where does that come from? Where where does that kind of song come from? You just you just gave us a gorgeous song, and so the track she sent me is her playing piano to it. Where does that come from? It comes from from your soul, first of all. It comes from you. Yes. You know, but like you know, I asked Chantel the same question. Um, who's influenced you? And you can actually give us, even if it's someone that's not a celebrity, if it's someone that was maybe personal to you or a family member that really influenced how you wrote those kind of songs. So I grew up in a musical family, so my mom is a singer and plays guitar. My my biological father, same thing. He was They were like in a band together before he went to jail, but that's irrelevant. <laughs> that's a song. That's, that's a, a song. country song. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so... You know, I've, I've always been musical, but um, something like this, I think, um, I, when I write, I write from a place of realness. Like, w I have to connect to the lyrics that I'm writing, and um, everything that's on my record is a part of, it's a part of my story. So you can basically listen to my record and know, oh, that's what she was going through in that song. Ooh, she really don't like him. Taylor Swift-like, but not about all the exes. Um, <laughs> And uh, so something like this would probably come from, from a musical influence, would be like um, a Sugar Land stay or, um, you know, a Miranda Lambert Tin Man, something that really resonates with people and people can kind of go, yeah, yeah, I've been there. I, I know what that feels like and, and you know, I want to be stronger or I want to feel beautiful even though I feel like, you know, a broken plate that, can't ever get put back together. You're beautiful. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so good. So beautiful. You are all beautiful, by the way. <laughs> so I got a, a slower tune as, as well here. I actually just wrote this. I just finished writing it yesterday. So this is the newest song that I have written. Yeah. I thought it'd be kind of cool to show something that uh, it's brand new. I'm not going to talk about it too much. I'm going to play it. Um, Turn 
Walk the lie with angels on the bedroom floor tonight. Angels on the bedroom floor tonight. really good it sounds like a that sounds like a song that should be on the radio oh yes yes cool especially the chorus part yeah thank yeah. you yeah you know i i, I there, there's so much i could say about this song and i won't say too much about it there's a lot in the lyrics there there's some different meanings to me um but uh i was just thinking in you know when we're alone we're in our room Right, we're by ourselves, and a lot of us are in our rooms right now in this this crazy time. And what are the things that we're thinking about? What are the things that we're working out inside ourselves? And and I love the idea of the most real thing being your bedroom floor. Yeah, I just really like that that idea. And you know what? Yeah. There is there is a little bit of for those Goo Goo Dolls fans out there, acoustic number three off Dizzy Up the Girl. If anyone knows that song, <laughs> a little bit of that I was feeling that. And uh, um, yeah, thank you. That's great. That's good. I, I heard a little country in there. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The yeah the finger picking stuff yeah. just a little bit. House that built me vibes mm. a little bit. Miranda. Right? I was thinking even Tin Man. <laughs> Tin Man's got that kind of vibe too, right? Yeah. 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 That so was cool. Pretty. Thank you. Yeah. Shan, give us give us a song. Yes. I'm excited to play this one. This is probably the best song I've ever written. Um, probably oh. because I... <laughs> <laughs> nice. Back up. This is the best song I've written, guys. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This, this is, I shouldn't say that. I this is... <laughs> no, you totally should say that. That's my favorite song I've written because I wrote it with a really cool guy named Chris Byrne. And we came up with this idea of, you know, there's no place like home. So I think a lot of people can relate to this, um, because especially now, right? <laughs> We've been at home a lot. Um, so I got the idea, I called my sister, and she was living in Halifax at the time and just really missing Fort McMurray and our family here because we all live here. And it's such an awesome place and just community, it feels like home. So we, we kind of came up with that line and and just rolled with it. So. Here it is. Got a call from my sister yesterday. She was feeling kind of blue. Said that she was missing home. I said, yeah, I've been there too. I know it's hard when everyone you love is a thousand miles away. 
she was getting choked up holding back her tears and all that i could say was walking around paris on a friday night cruising down broadway in the neon light seeing all the things that most people will never see standing on a beach watching waves roll in thinking about the million places that i've been i think i finally figured out where i'm supposed to be And no matter where I roam, there ain't no place like home. I remember me and you talking all about how we couldn't wait to leave. But looking back now, ain't it funny how the grass doesn't seem so green? Everybody dreams about seeing the world spreading your wings to fly. But coming back home to the place you love is the greatest thrill in life. Walking around Paris on a Friday night, cruising down Broadway in the neon light, seeing all the things that most people will never see. Standing on a beach watching waves roll in, thinking about the million places that I've been. I think I finally figured out where I'm supposed to be. Been around the world and no matter where I roam, there ain't no place like home. People will never see. Standing on a beach, watching waves roll in, thinking about the million places that I've been. I think I finally figured out where I'm supposed to be. I've been around the world, and no matter where I roam, seen a lot of things, but no matter where I roam. Place like home. Woo. Woo. Awesome. awesome. Beautiful. I got such early Leanne Rhymes vibes from that song. What? Yeah, totally. Like Thank her you. I'm on a one way ticket. Oh, I yeah. loved that it song when I was like nine years old. Yeah. It, and like the visuals of getting your song was so mm. good. I could just imagine the setting. I love that. Thanks, Ava. Yeah, <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, I kept thinking like music video language, and someone's got their, you know, old guitar case on their back, yes. and they're ready to, yeah. you know, they go over to their truck, and like we're 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 doing this, we're we're leaving this barren wasteland, and we're going home, you know, like the, I don't know, definitely had a. It's so cool cozy to hear feel. different perspectives of everyone. Hey, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that part about songwriting and sharing music. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Um, Aaron. Oh, yeah. Dude. What's going on? Mr. <laughs> Martin. Hello. Dude. Dude. <laughs> While you're getting your guitar on, um, Aaron, do you have a, uh, a first guitar story like Max? Yeah, actually. Um, my first guitar was actually my dad's guitar. Oh, that's Ooh. nice. So... Yeah. Um, he actually, um, when I was growing up, he used to play uh, Hawaiian. He started with acoustic way back when, and then he switched to Hawaiian. He was using the slide and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I grew up listening to him doing that. And then uh, he swapped back over to acoustic. And then, um, yeah. Um, so actually, his, his old, like, old guitar is back home, and I'm waiting to go home to pick it up and put it on the wall. Mm. I'm going to get him get his name engraved on it and all that stuff, right? So Beautiful. Yep. So, so good. What are you gonna sing for us tonight? Um, actually, this is another kind of nostalgic song. Funny enough, 
And uh, I was actually talking to an old buddy uh, a few days ago, and it was, you know, when you're small and uh, you used to be like, you knock on the door and, hey, can, uh, you know, Robbie come out and play and that kind of thing. It was, you know, you used to play tag with little kids. And uh, he was my best friend um, growing up. His name was uh, Brian Dixon. And uh, we were talking, and we hadn't talked for a long time because, you know, he's uh, back in Ontario and he's got a family and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, life gets at you, right? And uh, so we had a talk, we, you know, um, on Facebook and stuff like that. And then um, I just woke up one day and I came down. It's kind of the same thing as you and Max where you just kind of, and you're like, I got to sit down and write this, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I just wrote it and it was just, it's kind of just um, think about back when, when you used to uh, play with the kids and how even now when you're older, you think back, you know, to those moments and you're like, man, that was awesome. You know, and, and the daily grind gets at you now. And you you have your positive things now, but you you think back, you know, it's so, it was so simple, you know, yeah. riding the big wheel, riding your BMX bikes, playing tag, you know, that kind of thing. Wait for the dickety to come around and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so that's pretty much what it is. So it's called, um, I'm having a brain drain here. Just play it. Just play come. it. It'll come. <laughs> we'll name it for you. <laughs> Fishing by the creek with my old friend Brian D. I remember thinking in my mind, oh, we weren't about what's up at time. I used to grab the kids and play, run up and down the streets until late, running down and then joking around, living in life like bass and Trails, sliding that big wheel, let it out of the way. Good times always stay on my mind. You no, know, now we're doing the daily grind. Hey, never grow up, never slow down, and never grow up. Sing along with the sound. Never grow up. Jumping off, swinging seeds, waiting for all 